Okay. Um, I think you'd also ask people in the beginning to give a little introduction. Yeah. I think you already also you already introduced that I hold right now the title of Southeast or really like the responsibility of Southeast Regional Representative of INCOBRA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. Um, prior to that, I was the national uh, male co-chair of INCOBRA. INCOBRA has dual leadership. We have a national male and a national female co-chair. Um, I also serve as the uh, male co-chair of the Atlanta chapter of INCOBRA. Um, been involved with INCOBRA since 1996, since the conference came to Atlanta. And um, been very passionate doing the work on this um, since then. Also, I've worked with other um, social justice organizations as a community organizer and activist, and also worked around different political issues around um, ending the death penalty and police brutality and things like that. Um, work with the Black Farmers Association as well. So uh, that's a little bit about me in the background. And um, in terms of my faith, that one is uh, a little bit challenging for me to answer in the sense that uh, I consider myself a spiritual activist or uh, practice uh, in terms of faith tradition, not a specific uh, religion or faith tradition that I practice. I consider myself an African spiritualist. Um, and, and my understanding of that, as I said, I think in the first webinar, is that part of um, um, spirituality is basically um, how do we, how do we understand the the workings of the universe, but more importantly, how do we understand how to be more in harmony with the workings of the universe? And to me, that's a kind of basic, I guess, definition of, of spirituality. And also, I, even though I say um, there's not a particular religion I subscribe to, I, I do consider my foundation African traditional religion, um, more specifically the Yoruba Ifa tradition. One of the things that is um, taught in that traditional is around balance. Um, there's actually so much, it's actually interesting, uh, it's not the emphasis so much put on um, good or bad. Um, things are recognized as, you know, as the saying often goes, this, it is what it is, so to speak. However, things can be out of balance. Um, and and then when things are out of balance, it, it becomes incumbent for us to restore the balance. And so when things are out of balance um, energetically, when things are out of balance in terms of relationships, um, things are out of balance with uh, humans and nature, um, then there's things that we should um, do to try to bring that harmony back, to bring, that, uh, bring us back into balance and harmony. And so, um, given the um, situation that we find ourselves here in the United States, um, reparations um, to me represents the political and economic, but also the spiritual um, format uh, framework that allows us to um, bring things back into balance and harmony that are out of balance in terms of um, what has been done to people of African descent um, since they've been here in this country actually even before that um, being captured and um, brought to this country physically. So uh, when, when I um, began to learn about reparations, uh, like I said, having been an activist and having grown up in African tradition and culture, to me reparations um, provided the most holistic way of addressing the problems and challenges in our community. Um, you know, some of us, um, I know, you know, they may label ourselves like cultural nationalists and we may just really go in deep in on African culture and tradition or we may just focus on health and nutrition and things like that. And then there's other ones who are focused on, you know, economics, you know, uh, social justice and things like that in our community. And when, um, when I began to learn more about reparations, I said, aha, this gives us a way to address all of those concerns. It gives us a way to address uh, how we um, 
reclaim and restore ourselves in terms of African history and culture and tradition, but it also gives us a framework because, you know, you know, I, I used to say one time that, you know, I could be, I, actually, this actually happened. And so I remember one time coming from a uh, Kwanzaa event, um, I'm pretty happy. I just saw my daughter who was living out of town and she came in town for the Kwanzaa event and um, I'm wearing my African clothes, feeling really good. And then the police pulled me over basically for no reason. And, you know, in, in that situation, um, you know, culture really doesn't make a difference, you know, uh, celebrating Kwanzaa, having an African name, practicing African culture tradition in that situation didn't really make a difference. And, and, and I, I, that, that episode really, really always kind of pressed upon me that, you know, we have to address the situations we find ourselves in at every level, whether it's uh, the criminal justice system, um, police brutality, economic disparities, political uh, uh, disenfranchisement, oh, as well as uh, as well as dealing with our, our restoring ourselves in terms of our culture and traditions. Um, one other thing I was just thinking about this question. I just wanted to say is that one of the things that's also important about to me spirituality and particularly African culture and tradition is that we see things. Um, in the collective. So uh, oftentimes in this culture, you know, people are taught to focus on their individual well-being. If you can just get yourself together economically or politically or culturally, whatever, then you'll be all right or you'll be better off than other ones, right? And um, for me, and I guess this maybe goes to the compelling part, so for me it's important as an African activist, as, as an African person, period, to want to see harmony, not just for me or not to see myself in a good state or a restored state, but to see all of my people in a restored state. And so that's why I think, again, reparations um, gives us the best um, framework, again, for realizing that uh, on a collective basis, as opposed to just on an individual basis of um, addressing different um, challenges in our community or different problems in our community, even even just on our in our community, are still not a full collective basis. So I think that reparations. Uh, one of the statements I often say is I think reparations can address all of our challenges systematically, holistically, and comprehensively. So, uh, and I stand by that. So um, I'll put a pin in it there. I don't know how much time I have left. 